Hope you're having a good day today. We're going to be looking at the Beatitudes once again. Our hymn for today, if I got it back to the beginning, is the hymn, I Believe in Jesus. I believe in the one they call Jesus. I believe he still storm Galilee. I believe that he walked on the water. And I believe that he's the answer for me. Yes, I believe in the one they call Jesus. I believe he died on Mount Calvary. And I believe that the tomb was found empty. And I believe that he's the answer for me. Appreciate it, Lee. Okay, we're, we're going to be looking in Matthew chapter 5, like I said. We started on the Beatitudes yesterday. As Jesus, seeing the multitudes goes up on a mountain, he was seated, his disciples came to him. And we looked at the first few, the blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Now, down in verse 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. <clears throat> Excuse me. I wanted to begin by thinking about mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And it, it is an amazing thing how merciful the Lord was and is, and, the, and it's the mercy that the Lord calls us to have. Think about the woman caught in adultery and what the Lord says. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Recently been studying the account of the man at the pool, Bethesda. Sin no more lest something worse happen to you. Um, think about, for example, the, the Samaritan woman. And they're, they're at the well. And how, how kind the Lord is to her. You know, it's one thing to be merciful to the rich young ruler. After all, he kept the commandments since his youth. But the woman at the well, uh, she'd, had, she'd had quite a few husbands. And yet, the Lord was merciful. Doesn't mean that he overlooked sin, but he's merciful. He's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. The disciples at one point, James and John, a certain Samaritan village, wasn't receiving Jesus like they thought they should, and James and John ask if they should call down fire from heaven and burn it down to the ground. Jesus says, you don't know what kind of spirit you're of. The Son of Man did not come to condemn, but to save. The Lord is merciful. Back to our passage. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. The idea of making peace. Again, it's one thing to be at peace with those who are not adversarial. <laughs> but from the very beginning, you know, tax collectors and harlots, they're coming and confessing their sins. And... They're enjoying peace with God, and that's what this is. This is not peace like the world gives it. This is peace with God and peace with one another. And that's what the Lord calls the disciples to, to have peace with one another. How could Matthew, the tax collector, a Roman employee, how could he have peace with Simon the Zealot, a political activist, to put it mildly? The only way it's possible is because of Jesus. Because you believe there's a higher calling. And so we believe in the one they call Jesus. And especially on this side of the cross. But as we think about mercy, and we think about 
peacemakers. Back to our passage, the Lord also speaks about persecution. And we should appreciate Jesus because while his words are gracious, while the Lord is merciful, he does not overly sugarcoat things. And this is what the disciples needed to be in expectation of, that there is going to be persecution. This is what they're going to have to deal with. They're going to be reviled, and they're going to be persecuted for righteousness' sake. Woe to you when all men speak well of you. I think what the Lord is wanting to do is he's wanting, he's wanting to prepare for them for this reality is what he's wanting to do. Get, re get ready for it. It's coming. They're going to revile you. And I would suggest it's already begun, even this early. Because to look at the timeline, looks like John the Baptist has already been arrested. Why was he arrested? Because he told certain someone it was not lawful for him to be married. It was not lawful for, that, for him to have this certain woman as a wife. And so he's arrested. Later on in Matthew, it's going to speak about what's going to happen to John the Baptist. I bring that up. I bring all this up <clears throat> just to remind us, remember who these individuals were, the disciples. Before they were Jesus' disciples, they were John's disciples. You don't think they heard that John had been arrested? I assure you they had. They knew full well about it. They knew all about it. And so the persecution has already begun. This is what's going to happen. Stand up for the truth. Be merciful. Be a peacemaker. But some folks, and maybe a lot of folks, just aren't going to appreciate it like they should. That's the reality. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.